Hi, welcome to a new episode of Green Engineering and Alternative Energy. Today, you'll we'll learn more about methanol and hydrogen fuel. Don't worry, this video isn't just a bunch of boring PowerPoint slides. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. First, we'll start with methanol. Methanol is one of the most versatile compounds developed and it is the basis for hundreds of chemicals and thousands of products such as plastic bottles, car parts and even pharmaceutics. In our current age, methanol leads the world as one of the most promising alternative energy and new applications that utilizes methanol are paving the way forward towards innovation. As a truly global commodity, methanol is a part of the alternative energies that transcends and redefines the meaning of renewable. So, after all this talk about the use of methanol, how exactly does it work? Using a direct methanol fuel cell as an illustration, as methanol approaches the porous membrane, H2 atoms from the methanol diffuses through the membrane. Electrons of the H2 atoms will be led to the other side, passing through a motor. This movement of electrons powers up the motor as it travels to the other side. At the anode side, the remaining atoms forms carbon dioxide, while at the cathode, hydrogen atoms react with the oxygen to form water. One would only use methanol if there are advantages. So, what are they? Methanol is made from domestically renewable sources. This concept of renewable is exclusive for methanol as it can be mass produced using agriculture and feedstock through catalytic reforming and synthesis. The use of methanol reduces emission and has a lower risk of flammability compared to normal gasoline. Methanol has a flash point of 11 degrees C, while gasoline has a flash point of minus 40 degrees C. Furthermore, methanol has a high octane rating of 102, higher than that of gasoline at 94. As a high octane vehicle fuel, methanol offers excellent acceleration and power if used in motor vehicles. On the flip side, there are also disadvantages. High formaldehyde emission mean that humans need to find a way to isolate themselves from the constant exposure with methanol. In the context of powering up cars, methanol provides less gas mileage resulting in frequent refueling. Whether it enters the body's by ingestion, inhalation, or absorption through the skin, methanol can be fatal due to its CNS depressant properties in the same manner as ethanol poisoning. Methanol is a readily biodegradable compound and its half-life in soil, surfaces, and groundwater is about 1 to 7 days. By comparison, the half-life of benzene, a toxic gasoline constituent in groundwater, is an exaggerating 10 to 730 days. Although methanol has its drawbacks in producing energy, the sustainability potential in methanol is a factor that we humans cannot discount. As fossil fuels are used up at a rapid rate, it will be inevitable that we will need to depend on alternative energies such as methanol moving forward into the future. As such, it is important that we, as green engineers of the future, shift our paradigm from using non-renewable sources such as fossil fuel to renewable sources such as methanol. However, for this to happen, many branches of the industry have to work together to fully maximize the potential of methanol. What exactly is a hydrogen fuel? Have you ever wondered why the government, private businesses and academic institutions are collaborating to develop and produce them? Hydrogen fuel cells can generate electrical power quietly and efficiently without pollution. 
Unlike power sources that uses fossil fuels, the byproducts from hydrogen fuel cells are heat and water. So how does it work? Let's use fuel cell vehicle as an example. Hydrogen enters from the anode or fuel side of the membrane and passes through this porous membrane at the center, which is also an electron barrier and proton carrier. Since the electrons cannot pass through the porous membrane, they have to take an external path which goes through the traction motor and hence allowing the user to drive the car. When the electrons come back to the cathode side of the membrane, they combine with oxygen from the air and the hydrogen atoms to produce water. So that's how fuel cell vehicles work. What is so good about hydrogen energy? Hydrogen energy is readily available as there is no element in this universe that is as abundant as hydrogen. Additionally, hydrogen does not emit any harmful toxic when it is being burnt, leaving almost no harmful byproducts. And do you know that in NASA's spaceship, burnt hydrogen gas leaves behind clean drinking water for astronauts? Hydrogen energy being non-toxic is environmentally friendly unlike most other fuel sources that are toxic and hazardous to the environment. This makes hydrogen energy more ideal for use in a number of ways compared to other fuel sources that cannot be competed against. Lastly, hydrogen energy is renewable as it can repeatedly be produced on demand unlike non-renewable sources of energy. Yet, hydrogen itself is a powerful source of fuel. It is highly flammable and is always in the news for potential risk associated with. The production of hydrogen is also dependent on non-renewable fossil fuel such as coal, crude oil, or natural gas to separate hydrogen from oxygen. Lastly, hydrogen is a viable source of fuel for everyone and it is time consuming for its production. It is therefore expensive to produce hydrogen energy. Fuel cells are coming into widespread commercial use for stationary applications and a combination of reliability, efficiency, and low environmental impact make them an outstanding distributed generation technology for a range of applications, such as fuel for generators, batteries, and aeroplanes. As the technology improves and costs decline, more businesses and public institutions should turn to fuel cells as a source of both primary and backup power. In most conservative markets, any new technology requires significant support and public understanding in order to compete. Therefore, it is important for big companies to start investing on hydrogen fuel cells and capitalize on this industry. Furthermore, refueling, large-scale manufacturing processes, and support infrastructures such as trained personnel should be made available for fuel cell systems. Lastly, more time has to be spent on research and development in order to simultaneously improve the hydrogen fuel cell performance, reliability, and cost.
Kevin's gonna go to kick him going to Yes, so boring Wowie I want to see whether I have inside.